We've got an oil check valve, equalizer valve or degassing line. This keeps the pressure in the oil reservoir in check, stops it getting too high, ensures an even supply um, of oil to the compressor regulators, connects the oil reservoir to the suction line of the compressors. So oil reaches the reservoir with refrigerant gas. What we want to do is try and take out as much of that gas as we can. It discharges that excess vapour into the suction line of the compressor instead of it muddying the oil on the way into the oil sump. So oil crankcase heaters keeps the oil within the compressor body or crankcase at a temperature high enough for suitable operation. We don't want it to be too frigid because it doesn't flow well. It doesn't do what it needs to do. So compressor manufacturers recommend that heaters are operational when compressors are off. Copeland indeed stipulate that the crankcase heater should be operational for 12 hours before starting the compressor for the first time to prevent flooded start. And just before we jump in that, other manufacturers are going to do different things as well. You know, this is stuff that you need to dive into and look at those manuals because Bitzer, I think it says 95, they want that oil, you know, so it's not even a time. So some people will do time, some people will do temperature. You got to get into those manuals if you want to learn this stuff. That's why Nabil knows this stuff. He's getting into the manuals and reading that stuff. Go, Nabil. Absolutely. And then not every, uh, not every manufacturer uses the same metrics to determine whether something's okay. So, for instance, I've looked at plate heat exchanger uh, performance. Some look at velocity only. Some look at velocity plus shear stress. So don't just presume that because one manufacturer judges it on this, that all will judge on that same basis, because that's not necessarily the case.